just when you thought your wallet was safe, Turtle Beach comes crashing into the simulation scene with the release of their new product, the Velocity One Flight. It comes with everything you need to start flying like a real pilot, thanks to its immersive, lifelike yoke and throttle controls. I say we take it out for a spin and see how it handles. <laughs> Whee! Turtle Beach is doing a lot of things right here. Velocity One Flight Yoke prides itself on having everything you could possibly need out of the box to get yourself quickly set up and inside the cockpit with as little friction as possible. Included is an extremely useful quick start guide for those new to flight sims and the ability to create some custom status indicator panels. The device is plug and play, requiring zero configuration out of the box and comes preset with three onboard flight profiles. And thank heavens for those because look at all these fully programmable controls we have. Included with the yoke is a throttle quadrant that also includes these special vernier style controls for single engine prop planes commonly found in the Cessnas, a very nice trim wheel and 10 programmable buttons. Full transparency here, Turtle Beach did send me this product to review. However, the opinions here are entirely my own and they are seeing this video for the first time, just like you. I was gonna do an unboxing, but the box got kind of destroyed in shipping. So, no unboxing. All right, with all that out of the way, let's set some expectations. Coming in at $380, the Velocity One Flight may seem a bit pricey, especially to entry-level folks, but you're getting a lot of features packed inside of one package here. Indeed, to its credit, the Velocity One Flight is the only all-in-one yoke available for both PC and Xbox users as of this recording. In this video, I'm going to give a brief technical walkthrough of the yoke itself, a throttle quadrant, the way it feels in flight while flying Microsoft Flight Sim, and then close it out with my overall thoughts. I'll leave time codes in the description below if you feel inclined to skip around. I really like Turtle Beach's approach to mounting here, which allows for easy mounting and dismounting of the flight yoke. Perfect for those who still need to use their desk at the end of the day. The mounting system is hidden inside a compartment on the top of the yoke housing. Just lift the panel to reveal two bolts and an included hex tool for tightening. Be sure not to over tighten, as the rubber padding on the clamps will hold it in place just fine. Note that the mounting brackets will not accommodate desks thicker than 2.5 inches. Two adhesive pads are included for users, but this is a permanent solution and certainly not something I would recommend for most users. Moving on to the yoke. I'm happy to say that the yoke offers a full 180 degrees of movement to roll the plane left and right. The springs provide a smooth resistance through the turn, but there is a centering detent that can get in the way of your small, precise movements. Now you may be asking me, Chase, what the heck is a detent and why does it matter? Well, a detent is a noticeable indentation in the rotation of an object. In our case here, it indicates what is the true center of the flight yoke. You can really notice it when turning the yoke all the way and releasing it. Do you hear that? You can literally hear the detent. It's by no means a deal breaker, but some enthusiasts may be unhappy about it. Moving on to the aluminum shaft here, this part controls the pitch of the aircraft. The shaft movement allows you to push or pull the yoke about two and a half inches in either direction and generally feels smooth, although you may notice a bit of jerkiness right out of the box. I know I certainly did, but Turtle Beach has said that this issue should smooth itself out after about 20 hours of use. On the yoke itself are two POV hats with eight-way directions that can be used to look around the aircraft, and on each side are two buttons that will either reset your view or put you in a third-person mode. There are also two four-way hat switches for controlling your aileron and rudder trim by default. When gripping the yoke, there are two triggers that feel similar to what you would find on an Xbox controller. These are used to control the rudders, and above it are bumpers that are used to independently control the brakes on the left and right side of the aircraft. Front and center is a full-colored flight management display. You can interact with it, of course, allowing you to easily swap between preset flight profiles, which is especially useful for Xbox users, or using its built-in timer for timing approaches and stuff. There is a brilliant feature called training mode that you can enable, which will tell you what something is bound to when it senses an input. This is so incredibly useful for newer pilots who are just getting acclimated to the device. 
Aside from that, the only real use for the FMD is the chronometer page. It's nothing fancy, just a clock and a timer, but it's especially useful for those more advanced users among us who want to time their turns, their approaches, timing fuel tank swaps, you name it. Behind the yoke is a status indicator panel providing an assortment of real-time indicators as they may occur in-game. Everything from the parking brake to the flap indicators as well as master caution and low fuel warnings are on this default status indicator panel and in clear view behind the yoke. Turtle Beach even includes extra panels with stickers so you can create your own status indicator panels. Please know that this integration is coming in a later firmware update and was not a feature that was present as of the making of this video. On the left side of the yoke housing is a built-in audio port that is compatible with any headset that also has a built-in microphone. Last but not least here is the throttle quadrant. Surprisingly, the best part of this quadrant is the veneer controls, which have a nice smooth glide and just the right amount of resistance to them when pushed and pulled. This is an absolute treat to have on a throttle quadrant and a welcomed feature in the sim world. I'm also a big fan of the integrated trim wheel, which has just the right amount of resistance to it and allows for extreme precision of the elevator axis. As for the dual lever throttle controls, well, these have less resistance than I was expecting. Like, they move a little too easily. There is also a massive detent at the bottom of the throttles here that I would love to use for reverse thrust and jets but as it stands, I cannot bind it to do anything. It just seems to be a neutral zone for the throttle. The 10 buttons are a welcomed feature since you can bind them to anything of your choosing. Plus they include stickers that you can attach to the buttons so you always know what you're getting yourself into before pressing it. One last thing I should mention is that you can download the software to update this device through the Windows App Store. Just search for Turtle Beach Control Center, and there you can connect to the yoke and perform a firmware update to get those fancy features later on down the road. So that covers all the technicals of the yoke itself. Now that you're familiar with it, I think it's time we actually go fly with it. All right, I disengaged the parking brake. We're gonna push our mix up, go all the way in on the prop, and we're gonna full throttle. There we go, it starts to pull to the left. That's very typical. Gotta fight it. Fight it with the rudders. There we go. Yep, so far so good. Oh, I take my eye off the line. Go ahead and pull up. Beautiful Redwood City, California. Looks just like the real thing. I can fly over Electronic Arts right over here. Oh, they even have the right building models for it. There's EA. Haven at EA. Whee! All right, here I am in the Airbus. And what I really like is you can see the trim in real time. So you know exactly where it's at. So we're going to zero it out. Okay, zero it out. We are going to drop our flaps 50%, release the parking brake, and we're off. All right, we got 140 knots. Gonna go pull up, pull back on the yoke. Just airborne. Gonna lift gear. For those wondering how I'm controlling the camera with my head, I am using what is called a Toby Eye Tracker 5 attached to the bottom of my monitor, but it is only available on PC. I'm gonna go ahead and fly right over San Francisco. All right, here we go. We're gonna fly over the office. CNET headquarters in San Francisco. Buzz that tower real good. For our next trick, we're gonna fly underneath the Golden Gate Bridge. Got it even out, Scotty. Woo. We're just over the water now. Just gotta bring her a little lower. 100. 60, 50, 40, Woo. 30. We can do it! Ah! <laughs> we did it! So after spending some quality time with the Velocity Flight 1, here are my thoughts on it. 
This is a great entry-level yoke, especially for newer pilots, and I can't praise Turtle Beach enough for including the fold-out poster that is both a quick start guide and has instructions on what every single action the yoke can perform on the aircraft. My only critique on this yoke is that there is a little too much play here where the yoke is mated to the shaft. I think more stabilization along the shaft to minimize the amount of play here would be a lot better because the combination of that amount of play with the center detent can result in what feels like a rather large dead zone in the middle. And that can be exacerbated when flying one handed. These are my only gripes for what is otherwise an amazing first gen yoke system by Turtle Beach. Regardless of my gripe, I still had heaps of fun flying with it. All right, that about does it for the Velocity One Flight by Turtle Beach. If you liked this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and let us know you want to see more of this kind of content on the channel. If you have any questions about the device, go ahead and drop a comment down below. I'll do my best to get back to you. That about does it for me. I'm Chase Evans. Have fun and fly safe. All right, we're bringing her in. Oh no, look out. Crazy taxi.